Hello students, uh, today we are going to study pharmacology of uh, fibrinolytics also called as thrombolytics. Now as we all know a clot is made up of fibrin network in which are entangled blood cells and platelets and a clot that is formed inside a blood vessel is called as thrombus. Now fibrinolytics are the drugs that break fibrin network and thus they dissolve a pathological blood clot or a pathological thrombus that is formed inside a blood vessel. Now as these drugs dissolve pathological thrombus, they are indicated in the treatment of uh, acute myocardial infarction. Now as we all know, acute myocardial infarction is characterized by sudden formation of thrombus on ruptured plaque in the coronary blood vessels. Now fibrinolytics break the thrombus uh, that is formed on the ruptured plaque and that is how they are useful in the treatment of acute myocardial infarction. Further, they are indicated in uh, deep vein thrombosis in legs, pelvis, uh, uh, shoulder, etc., where they break the thrombus. Then are, they are also indicated in pulmonary embolism, uh, where they break the emboli or a uh, moving thrombus in the pulmonary blood vessels. Then, further, they are indicated in peripheral arterial occlusion, uh, where thrombus blocks the peripheral arteries. And these drugs they break the thrombus and thus they prevent the uh, occlusion in the peripheral arteries. Then further these drugs are indicated in ischemic stroke uh, where they break the thrombus uh, that is located in the cerebral blood vessels. Now uh, fibrinolytics also dissolve uh, or uh, fibrinolytics also dissolve uh, clots that are formed in surgical bypasses uh, then in dialysis fistulas uh, then clots that are formed in catheters. Uh, now however these uh, fibrinolytics uh, they should be administered in uh, carefully selected patients. Now thrombolytic therapy is contraindicated in patients with the uh, history of uh, intracranial hemorrhage, uh, then history of ischemic stroke in the past three months, then history of head injury in the past three months, uh, they are also contraindicated in intracranial tumor uh, or any type of vascular abnormality. Uh, they are also uh, contraindicated in patients with aneurysm that is localized swelling in the wall of artery. And uh, they are contraindicated in patients with a history of uh, major sur surgery within, la within last three weeks. Uh, then uh, a bleeding disorder. Uh, further, they are contraindicated in patients with peptic ulcers or any wound, uh, patients suffering from hypertension or uh, uh, in pregnancy. Uh, there are three main classes of fibrinolytics. Uh, the first class consists of streptokinase, uh, the second class consists of urokinase, and the third class is of recombinant tissue plasminogen activator, uh, which consists of fibrinolytics like altiplase and Tenecticlase. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of fibrinolytics. Now fibrinolytics are the drugs that activate the natural uh, fibrinolytic system. Now as we all know that physiologically if the wall of a blood vessel is ruptured, uh, the blood vessel starts bleeding and this bleeding is stopped by the formation of the clot at the site of injury. Now after the healing of injury, the fibrin clot is dissolved. Now plasminogen is an enzyme that digests the fibrin. Now this plasmin is generated from the plasminogen. Now this plasminogen is of two types. Plasminogen circulating in the plasma and plasminogen bound to the fibrin in a clot. Now inactive plasminogen is converted to active plasmin by the tissue plasminogen activator which is produced by the endothelium. Now this tissue plasminogen activator, it selectively activates uh, the fibrin bound plasminogen. That means uh, the tissue plasminogen activator selectively activates the plasminogen that is uh, found in the clot. Now the plasmin that is generated breaks the fibrin network that is solubilizes the fibrin network such that the clot dissolves because the clot is uh, made up of blood cells and the platelets that are entangled in the fibrin network. So once this fibrin network dissolves, the clot also dissolves. Now fibrinolytics are the drugs uh, that activate plasminogen 
so that the plasmin generated breaks the fibrin network. Now unlike the tissue plasminogen activator that selectively activates the plasminogen bound to the fibrin, these fibrinolytics they can activate a plasminogen uh, bound to the fibrin as well as the plasminogen uh, that is found circulating in the plasma. So these uh, fibrinolytics they can be fibrin specific like tissue plasminogen activator or these fibrinolytics they can be non-specific that means they can activate plasminogen bound to the fibrin as well as plasminogen that is found circulating in the plasma. Uh, now let's talk about the uh, first class of fibrinolytics uh, which consists of streptokinase. Now streptokinase is the first fibrinolytic used clinically. It is obtained from non-pathogenic beta-hemolytic streptococci bacteria group C. Now talking about the mechanism of action of uh, streptokinase, streptokinase is inactive as such. It combines with plasminogen circulating in plasma and it forms uh, 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 active complex uh, of uh, streptokinase plasminogen complex that is an activator complex. Now this activator complex then produces breakdown or proteolysis of inactive plasminogen to produce the active plasmin. Now this active plasmin then breaks the insoluble fibrin network. Now when the insoluble fibrin network breaks the clot dissolves. So this uh, causes the uh, dissolution of clot. Now one of the major disadvantages of streptokinase is its non-fibrin specificity. Now unlike the tissue plasminogen activator that is released from endothelium uh, that activates only fibrin bound plasminogen, streptokinase activates circulating plasminogen as well as plasminogen that is bound to the fibrin. Now since it also activates plasminogen that is found circulating in the plasma, streptokinase predisposes to bleeding. It causes high risk of bleeding. Now streptokinase since it is derived from bacteria it is highly antigenic and as we have already uh, discussed it, uh, it has a very high risk of bleeding. It predisposes the patient to bleeding. Half-life of streptokinase is 30 to 80 minutes and it is administered uh, by intravenous route. Now it is less effective compared to a uh, fibrin specific recombinant tissue plasminogen activators in opening occluded blood vessels in, uh, in dissolving the clots. Now primary exposure to streptokinase produces antibodies and thus streptokinase cannot be used second time due to neutralization by the antibodies produced uh, during the first exposure. Now let's talk about the second class of fibrinolytics which consists of uh, urokinase. Now urokinase is an enzyme which is derived from the human urine. Now it is commercially produced from cultured human kidney cells. Uh, urokinase is non-fibrin specific. Uh, that means it activates plasminogen bound to fibrin as well as plasminogen circulating in the plasma and therefore it uh, predisposes to bleeding that means it shows high risk of bleeding plasma half-life of urokinase is uh, 10 to 15 minutes and it is administered uh, by the intravenous route now unlike streptokinase urokinase is non-antigenic and it is seldom used now now let's talk about the third class of fibrinolytics that is a recombinant tissue plasminogen activators uh, the drug we are going to discuss is the altiplase Altiplase is a fibrinolytic that is produced by recombinant DNA technology from human tissue culture. A uh, very important characteristic feature of uh, Altiplase is this that it is moderately specific for fibrin bound plasminogen. That means it uh, predominantly activates plasminogen that is bound to fibrin and therefore the risk of bleeding is less uh, with Altiplase compared to streptokinase and urokinase. Now altiplase is rapidly cleared by liver and it is also inactivated by plasminogen uh, activator inhibitor 1 and therefore 
uh, it has a very short half life of 4 to 8 minutes and thus it is administered by slow intravenous infusion over a long period of about 90 minutes and often requires co-administration of heparin that is an uh, anticoagulant. It's expensive uh, but it is not uh, antigenic. Uh, however, alteplase can produce uh, uh, side effects like nausea, mild hypotension and fever. Let's talk about uh, another recombinant tissue plasminogen activator that is the tenecteplase. Tenecteplase is also produced by recombinant DNA technology. It's a genetically engineered, structurally modified form of uh, tissue plasminogen activator. Now, tenecteplase is a proteolytic enzyme. That means it breaks plasminogen to plasmin, thereby breaking the fibrin network and thus it dissolves a clot. Now compared to alteplase, tenecteplase has a greater specificity for fibrin bound plasminogen and thus it exhibits reduced incidences of non-cerebral bleeding. Now unlike alteplase, it also exhibits resistance to inhibition by plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 and thus it has a longer half-life. Now, half-life elim elimination of uh, tenecteplase is biphasic. Uh, initial uh, half-life of uh, 20 to 24 minutes and terminal half-life of 90 to 130 minutes. Now, it is the only fibrinolytic that is administered IV as a single bolus dose over 10 seconds. And uh, as uh, uh, we have already uh, discussed, it shows reduced incidences of uh, non cerebral bleeding since it is a uh, it, it has a greater specificity for fibrin bound plasminogen. Uh, so this is all about the pharmacology of uh, fibrinolytics. Now if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video. You can ask your questions by writing in the comment section. Uh, thanks for watching the video.